All right, somebody had asked to uh, demonstrate and show my power feed a little bit on the uh, sawmill. And uh, you'll have to ex excuse me here. It's been sitting outside uh, throughout the winter. It's starting to get some rust on it. And, you know, things happen during the winter and you're not able to get to certain projects. I'd like to get a little more work done on this, but there's a boat sitting in my driveway and it's just hard getting things done in the winter time. But uh, somebody had asked to see uh, my setup on my power feed on here. So I figured I'd, I'd take you through it a little bit. It's all um, running off of this winch. I got this winch at Harbor Freight. It was like the cheapest one I could get. And uh, what I did was I modified the spool on the winch. I took this off and I uh, machined it down on a lathe. <clears throat> and uh, on, on the winch, you'll see that I bolted a... Uh, uh, a sprocket on here. I think this is number 40 chain. I can't remember exactly. I want to say it's number 40 chain and uh, I bolted this down with some grade 8 bolts. I think they're 5 16 and uh, You'll see I have a couple idlers on either side. And these are just kind of welded into a couple of lout riggers And this was all done with a Harbor Freight welder just a, a flux core welder All right, and uh, I have a couple of bolts that are welded in as well on the bottom here Going straight up and down holding these idlers in place so I got an idler on each side, and that's kind of just to secure the chain so that it's uh, tightly wrapped around this uh, number 40 um, <clears throat> sprocket that I have here. Uh, and then all the way on each end of the saw, I have uh, just a tightening mechanism here. It's just a bolt that goes through this uh, piece of metal here. And uh, I had to kind of grind the bolt down a little bit. I'm trying to focus here. This camera is like shot. Come on, there it is. So I had to kind of grind the, the bolt down. Oh, come on. Focus. There it is. I had to kind of grind the bolt down a little bit. I just put a master uh, master link on the end here. Man, this thing is... There we go. And I can adjust the tautness uh, through this carriage bolt here. You don't have to use a carriage bolt. I just... This is what I had. And uh, I put a couple bolts on here to kind of lock it in place. And one on each side. So it doesn't move around. <clears throat> Ideally, the chain... It probably would have been better suited if it was rotated 90 degrees, but I really, I, I had no other way of mounting my winch. I had to mount my winch vertical in this situation. I just kind of, I don't know, I didn't really put a lot of thought into it. This is the way I had to mount it. Otherwise, I'd be interfering with my uh, location of where the log bunks are and where I can mount a log. And you'll see on the other side of the chain, I have the same basic setup here. Another carriage bolt. And uh, it's been ground down with a master link inside of it. All right, similar setup. I think overall I'm at, uh, what was it, 8, 16? I want to say I'm at 16 feet for the length of this. So I, I think I can mill up to, what's it, just over 12 feet. So a log just over 12 feet. And then I have uh, my control panel here. This is just a couple uh, different, um, what was it, controllers that I have inside here. Uh, the battery was dead. I had it on charge, but it's still kind of dead. I don't even know if this thing turns over, but this is my main switch. Puts power to everything inside the box, which is two t DC, um, what is it? Uh, the two DC, what do you, whatever you call it, things. Let's see if it starts. No, it doesn't even have enough power to, to engage a starter, the Bendix on a starter. Uh, but I can go up and down. That's with this winch up here, and that's just running a. Um, that's just running just a regular uh, a winch cable. But I can move the whole system up and down, so I could ch change the location of where I'm sawing. And then um, right here, this is my uh, feed. I can move it forward and back. Let's see. There it goes. Well, let's move it back this way. And with a full battery, it'll move a little bit quicker. I mean, I'm not setting any records here. This is my first time doing something like this. It's just, just a homemade machine. But I think if I'm milling a big log, you really don't want to be moving very fast anyway. I got to do something to uh, also... Oh, boy. I got to do also something to uh, control uh, the stopping mechanism. Put a safety stop in there. All right, but we'll go ahead and slide this forward. Uh, crank that off. And there, there we are moving forward. I can tell that the battery is kind of weak. Now uh, the cold kind of takes something out of it. 
But uh, we'll go ahead and turn that off, put that back on charge, and put the charger back on it. But that's my basic power feed setup. Uh, I'm sorry, they were called DC pulse width modulators, just came to me. Um, and I bought them on Amazon, everything's wired inside this box. I mean, they, they've been working, they've just been sitting out here in the elements now for over the winter, which gets pretty bad in New York. And uh, I didn't get the cheapest ones on Amazon, they weren't like really, I had trouble getting them to work, they just didn't work for me. I got ones that were just a little bit more, it was like a big black box pulse, DC pulse width modulator, I think it was like 50 amps that they can pull. So um, yeah, they seem to work pretty good. So again, my basic setup, I have a uh, tensioner on each side here. I think this is number 40 chain. I just got this on Amazon and I got my uh, 2000 pound winch. I think that should be fine. I don't need anything crazy. It would be nice if the winch spun a little bit faster. Uh, to get that to spin faster, I could also just change this, this sprocket in here to a larger sprocket. I feel like this thing has enough power to really pull as much as I want. And the only thing is if I change the size of the sprocket, I'm gonna be hitting into this bracket here. So I can't really go much bigger, but I could probably hollow that out just a little bit. But again, my uh, goal is just to kind of get this thing going, you know, relatively soon. And then I can think about like changing it up. But uh, I got my log bunks in. I know I had talked about that. So wherever I have a log bunk, I have a, uh, a jack and they're rated at 5,000 pounds going down to the ground. So each bunk can hold 10,000 pounds, which I don't plan on exceeding ever. All right, but again, uh, that's connected right into wherever my log bunk is so that the trailer's not actually supporting the log. Uh, the bunk is supporting the log, which is supported by uh, these pump jacks. So I got five pump jacks, uh, one for each one of these log bunks. I do have a third log bunk all the way at the end probably would be a good idea to get some sort of stabilization here as well and then I have a uh, pump jack all the way at the end here but that's my basic setup uh, if you have any questions uh, feel free to reach out